Now, you, you already have smiles on your face, so just spread it around the entire congregation. Just look around and embrace all of these sweet beings who have come out to worship with you, to worship with the presence of God, to celebrate the divine presence. And be aware that it's easy to do because your consciousness is infinite. So you can virtually hug all of these beings because they're all a part of you. And so you're, you're, you're allowing to cascade from the very center of your being the love of God, the, the peace of God, the, the generosity of the spirit onto all of these beings. And then if you'll be so kind as to single out one being sitting next to you, in front of you, behind you, look at that being. Matter of fact, just touch their hand if they're next to you. And just say, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm sitting next to you. And there's something I've got to say. There's some beauty up in you. There's love all over you. There's peace all in you. Joy is breaking out all over. And you have the vibration of all needs met. You have arrived to make a difference on this planet and to change the world for the better. Let's be this. Let's be about this. Let's do this together in the here and now. And so it is. Amen. Touch and agree. Give up that handshake, that hug, and feel the dynamic field that's being created by your connection with the presence of God consciously and by your connection with each other as you're hearing a mother Mary say my soul does magnify the Lord you're hearing this group soul is magnifying the Lord the great law of life the law of increase the law of unfoldment the law of evolutionary impulse where the infinite continues to express itself by means of us over and over and over again without repeating itself you are here with a dynamic charge to become more never less than your true self and to anchor the realm of ever-expanding good what you saw when you looked into each other's eyes to anchor that heaven on earth until heaven and earth become one thing by virtue of the fact that you're standing on it and bringing that dynamic love on the planet. You, 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 touch your neighbor and say, tag your it. Tag your it. That's a message from God. <laughs> tag your it. That's a message from God. In other words, uh, the spirit of the living God, whole, perfect, and complete, infinite, everywhere, present, recreated itself after its own image and likeness, named itself each and every one of you, tagged you so that you could represent the presence of God according to your unique pattern, an unrepeatable spiritual idea that will never exist again, and no one can ever be you, only you can be you. So the universal presence is saying, tag, you're it. I've given you everything. I've left nothing out. There's no original sin. There's only an original blessing. I've poured my whole being into you as an omnipresence, and you are here feeling the tag, you're it consciousness so that all that the presence is can now emanate and express through. And as you, you have a mandate from the spirit to wake up and be charged with excellence, vitalizing good on the planet, this time in human history and beyond. Now, as the theme would indicate, the theme is Earth School, your place to earn karma credit. Now, that's a wonderful topic. I think so anyway. <laughs> because Earth really is a school. It is a place in which everything is condensed and slowed down. In other words, the thoughts and the feelings, the emotions, the perceptions, the choices, the decisions, everything uh, that you are about mentally and emotionally, eventually, if it's chronic, eventually begins to manifest somewhere in your life as an experience or condition, something to that effect. And it happens over a period of time. Time is the measurement of experience or the measurement or the distance between objects. So on Earth, uh, where people are... In this space of time and space, you have an opportunity to take a look at what you're manifesting in a very slow way. 
Now, when you make your transition and when you're on the other side, the moment you think something, it is. There is no time there. And so when people make their transition from this realm to the other, they forget that the moment they imagine something, it happens right then. And they have to acclimate themselves uh, to being aware that what's flowing through their awareness has a tendency to manifest almost immediately. But here, it takes a little time. It's a school for you, for you to learn that ultimately what you believe, what your chronic thinking is, what you believe, even if those beliefs are hidden, will show up and manifest so you can begin to track back, get the feedback, change your mind, change your point of view, change your perception, change your conversation, change your belief, change your opinions, so that the feedback begins to be uh, that, uh, that which you are sharing, that which you are giving, that which you are radiating is in harmony with the fundamental harmony of the universe and your life begins to take on the tenor and the timber of the dynamic good that's loaded and coated with every cell of your being, every spiritual aspect of your DNA, you get to, so you get to absolutely shift and allow that to occur. Secondly, on the planet, every stage of development is here on the planet. From an individual that has deep criminality, destructive tendencies, does not know who they are, and would soon as steal or destroy, in order to get what they think they want, all the way up to individuals who are loving God with all of their heart and soul and are seeking to make a mighty difference on the planet, that are not walking around with me, 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 my, 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 but are walking around asking, how can I serve? How can I be available to the presence of God? How can I be an opening for more good to flow through? How can I live in compassion, kindness, forgiveness, creativity, love, and beauty? You have every stage on this planet and experiences and conditions of every stage on this planet at the same time which uh, creates the context for choice. In other words, as all of this stimuli is uh, bombarding your awareness every single day, ultimately you have to hear, choose ye this day whom you shall serve, God or mammon, God or fear, God or separation, God or hate, God. Or commercialism, God or consumerism, God or, or, or the condition that would separate. You have to choose moment by moment by moment. And every time you choose the higher frequency over the lower frequency, you're developing karma credit. You're developing, you're, 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 you're activating your spiritual muscle. So if you can uh, look at earth as a magnificent, uh, a gigantic gymnasium, so to speak, and uh, you can't go into the gym or look at a commercial of people exercising and develop the, your, your muscles. You can't just look at it. You actually have to choose to go in and work out. You've got to do your yoga or your qigong or your walking or your running or whatever it is. But you cannot just think about it. You, have, you absolutely have to do it. So here on earth, this is a gigantic weight machine place. Gymnasium. Gym. Okay. <laughs> and so every day, you get to lift a little weight. Every day, there's going to be some kind of condition that comes at you. And that you're going to have to choose. So that means you have to take your mind back. You have to take your imagination back. It's been hijacked by the world. Hijacked by worst case scenarios. Hijacked by fear, doubt, and worry. That creates a reactivity within you. Rather than a response from the infinite a reaction from time, you have to choose the high road on a regular basis, earning karma credit, and become stronger and stronger and stronger along the way. Thus, when you hear individuals ask, and oftentimes it's asked in our classes, uh, when people are beginning in this teaching, they'll ask, well, if God is all that, if God is everywhere present, omni present, has no beginning, has no ending, all wisdom, all love, all beauty, all intelligence, always flowing, never ending. How come God does not just make everybody perfect and not have to go through suffering and not have to go through all of this negativity? How come all this stuff is here? Now understand this. First of all, God does not create an automaton or a robot. God creates its own image and likeness and sets it free to discover the divinity within itself. That would be you, which means you have to activate your choice moment by moment by moment. 
and you learn to navigate through the turbulence that's happening on the planet, and every individual knows at some point that a sailor becomes a, a good sailor in turbulence, not when everything is calm. When that, if, if you don't go out into the harbor and, and experience some waves and some turbulence, you're not going to develop your skills. And so you have incarnated. When you've incarnated on purpose. You're not here by accident. When you chose this incarnation, you ran into two kinds of turbulence. One, the first turbulence that you run into is that which is called the status quo. As soon as you come in, whatever the status quo is, whatever year you were born, there was some status quo-ism going on. <laughs> could have been in your family, could have been in your neighborhood, could have been in the country, in politics. Uh, there was something uh, that you were being asked to fit into. And so you learn to navigate, you learn to conform, you learn to, 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 to uh, defend yourself against it, you learn to figure out a way to kind of navigate through the status quo quo-ism of your time until that divine discontent within you said there's something within me that's bigger than the status quo. There is a path that hasn't been run on yet. There's a journey that hasn't been taken yet. There's a gift that hasn't been shared yet. There's a dynamic spiritual vision and an idea that hasn't, been, hasn't emerged yet because I wasn't here to do it. And so in that moment, you begin to break free. Sometimes it's called teenage rebellion. <laughs> so, whenever, whenever it happens, sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a moment of divine discontent. It's called middle age crisis sometimes, in, in which everybody's gotten everything they want and they're still not happy because something else was trying to emerge, you see? And so whatever it's called is a moment where that spiritual urge within you has to be caught, articulated, felt, and you have to walk in that direction. You may not know where it's carrying you, but you got to walk in that direction. And you begin to break the bounds and the, and the change of status quo, and you begin to up-level right where you are out of nothing but an idea and a deep feeling, sometimes a divine sense of discontent, Sometimes a vision of infinite possibility, but something begins to move you. That's one uh, aspect of the turbulence that you have, have come here to be about, to transcend. The second aspect is called evolutionary turbulence. And that means uh, there are certain things that happen on the planet at a particular period of time. Right now, the earth is vibrating very high. Right now, this teaching, which used to be peripheral back in the days, is now central. Back in the days, 30, 40 years ago, you had to go into the back room of a bookstore and find your metaphysical books. You had to put a cover on them so nobody could see what you were reading, you know? You, sometimes you put a Bible cover on it, you know what I mean? I'm reading the Bible, baby, you know? But inside, you were going into the mysteries of what Jesus meant. You were going into the mysteries of what Buddha really taught. You see, you were going into the mysteries of, of Kuan Yin and Zoroaster and Krishna. You were going into the, the mysteries, uh, uh, and you were breaking the seal of the mystery. As our Native American brothers and our African brothers and our shamans are telling us, this is the time of the unfolding of the seal. And which that which was mysterious is now being known by the masses. And so this, this teaching, which was peripheral back in the day, you go back, back in the day, and some of the mainstream churches wouldn't even work with me. They say, you're too exotic. You're too, oh, no. <laughs> you know, whatever. But now it's central. You hear from pulpits around the world, God is within us. God is the innermost God, and the uppermost God is the same God. You're never separated from God. God can't create a man in sin. God can only create blessings. And the sin is missing the mark. The sin is blocking the good. The sin and the blasphemy is hindering the good within you from expressing. All that which was peripheral is now central. So what does that mean? In an evolutionary context, that means the vibration is high enough that the darkness can now be seen. That which was hidden can't hide no more. You see? And so people are saying, oh, things are getting worse. Things are getting worse. 
Yeah, in the phenomenal realm, it appears that things are getting worse. Many things are going backwards. But in the spiritual realm, all it means is that that which was hidden is now being able to be seen so it can be challenged, so it can, it can be healed and transmuted. I mean, people are talking about the fact uh, that we had uh, uh, so nationalistic rallies and we thought that was over. But if you ask anybody in here who has a little bit of melanin, they will tell you that was still here. It, 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 it hadn't disappeared. It just wasn't popular. People were doing it in the back room. They were wearing ties and showing up and saying, we love everybody, you know. But inside, there was something else going on. Now it's not hidden. Now it's out front. Now it's, it's out there where it can be challenged. It can be transmuted. It can be healed. So, so that's the evolutionary turbulence uh, that you have come to deal with and to deal with it in a way that moment by moment by moment you are choosing the high road. You're choosing the vi vibration and the frequency of a dynamic peace, a dynamic love, a dynamic creativity, a dynamic order, dynamic loveliness. You're, you're choosing that. And so when you see that you're in school, then you don't ask, why does God not do this and do that? Listen, God said, tag, you're in. I sent you. <laughs> I'm everywhere present, but you got to be an instrument for me. That's like saying, how come electricity doesn't come up and light everything? Well, electricity is everywhere, but you got to have a bulb, okay? <laughs> now, God is everywhere. You're the light bulb. You're the instrument. So don't be bemoaning, why doesn't God? God sent you. And your question, it must be, what is it that's mine to do? You have to ask that question. It's not going to be the same answer for everyone. Everyone has different gifts. Everyone has different talents that they're cultivating. Everyone has a different band of experience that produces a different level of giving a nest. But you ask that question, what is it that's mine to do? And then you'll walk through earth school. You'll see the shift and the changes that are going on. You will notice that, 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 the, that the earth is vibrating higher, that consciousness is expanding, and that which was hidden is coming forward. Instead of getting mad of that which is coming forward, you will begin to say, what is it that's mine to do to heal? What is it that's mine to do to encourage? What is it that's mine to do to love? What is it that's mine to do to be creative? And so then right where you are, according to your giftedness, you will be the one that brings heaven to earth. You're not going to wait for God to do it. God's already done everything that God's going to do. Because it's already, that's why we say it's already done in the mind of God. But it can, must come through us. This is the teaching of responsibility. You see, it's not riding under heaven onto the coattails of somebody else. You can't do it. You can't ride on the coattails of Jesus. Jesus did his thing. Jesus is encouraging you to do the greater things by becoming aware of your oneness with God and to pray 24-7, to pray without ceasing so that you begin to do what you're supposed to do. So when he says in substance, greater things than these shall you do, oh, this God, there's a lot of stuff going down on the planet. We're not just trying to feed 5,000. We're trying to feed millions. A lot of people homeless. A lot of people don't have it. So it's not just 5,000 in a little village. We're trying to embrace a love ethic that takes care of everybody. That's a miracle. That's, that's a big miracle. That's a gigantic miracle. And it's not, and God ain't going to come and just, oh, okay, I'm just going to feed everybody. No, 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 no. It's going to come through you, boo. It's going to come through you. It's going to come through we. It's going to come through us. We're lifting the vibration. And every time you choose in your conversation, you choose the higher frequency, you're developing karma credit rather than karma deficit. In other words, instead of spinning something, some energy that you're going to bump up into later that's negative or, or pulling you down, you're going to spin something into your life that's going to bring about an onrush of more good. It's going to feel like grace. It's going to feel like, oh, I didn't really earn this. Where is this coming from? Well, you lifted your vibration. You see, you extended your awareness. And check it out now. 
You have the capacity to increase your choiceability. Every single day when you make a little tiny bit of choice to error on the side of love, then momentum is developed and that energy starts to take you over. Look at your neighbor right now. Compliment them about anything. Just whatever. It might be their hair, it might be their shoes, it might be their dress, it might be their smile, it might be how they smell. Whatever, just give them a compliment. Give up the energy. You're looking good. I like your smile. Oh, you've got tremendous beauty radiating from you. Just, and, and now, and listen to what the other person is saying too. Receive that compliment. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? Feels good, right? Now, scientifically speaking, you can criticize and condemn, or you can, can confirm and commend. You can criticize and condemn or confirm and commend another. If you confirm and commend and compliment, something organic, biological takes place in your being. There's an onrush of tonic chemicals that flow through you. And even though you're giving a compliment, even though you are confirming somebody, even though you're complimenting somebody, that the energy is coming through you and your body temple starts to produce uh, these chemicals that uh, expand or amplify the immune system, slow down the aging process, create stem cells that, that rush to places that need healing in the body temple. And so you, we want to be generous in that. And if it's difficult to be generous that way, it is best to be quiet until something can come forward uh, of a complimentary confirmation uh, uh, kind of consciousness. You just practice it in little ways. And, you'll under, and the bitterness of your tongue will be turned to sweet nectar. And every time you speak, it'll be a blessing. And you'll develop so much karma credit that affirmations will flow from your life. And de de declarations and creed about possibility will occur. And you'll see the highest and best, uh, not making it up. It's there. The, the, the butterfly is in the cocoon. You'll see it. The spirit of God is in the turbulence. It is in the breaking down of the old and the birthing of the new. You're not just making it up. Even though you have to take your mind back, you have to take your imagination back where it's been hijacked by fear and allow it to be re-enchanted. As you were when you were a child, you, you, your imagination was a place of enchantment about possibility and creativity. You can go into a room with nothing and create games and possibilities before your mind was hijacked by video games. You could just create out of nothing, get a piece of paper and a piece of lint and a bobby pin, and you could create a whole world. There was enchantment. You want to have your imagination become re-enchanted again about possibility. So when you wake up and go outside, you're looking to confirm uh, uh, individuals, to compliment, uh, and, 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 and life itself, the flowers that you see, the trees that you see, you just bow. You know those trees are bowing to your divinity when you walk by? Sometimes those trees know more about your divinity than you know about your divinity, you see. And so you, you, you rise up in that awareness. And then you hear this, as the topic would indicate. It's easy if you don't know how. It's easy if you don't know how. Now, what the heaven does that mean? You have an egocentric point of view. It's an ego. It tries to keep you in shallow water. People drowned in shallow water when the ego was running it, boy. <laughs> Listen. And, 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 and this egocentric part of you, begins, uh, it, it creates what is called delays for you moving forward. The, one of the biggest delays the ego uh, creates is, uh, I need to know how to do it first. No, you don't. That's a delay tactic by the ego. You don't have to know how. The how comes after you start moving in the direction. You take little steps. You begin to describe the what. You begin to describe the vision. You begin to just, and you start to just take tiny steps to move in that direction. And then the universe, through its law, begins to wrap itself around that. 
And then the wisdom and the guidance and the people and the support begin to show up. And then you learn the hows as you take the next step. And then you learn the other hows as you take the next step. And you take the next step. And then when you write your how-to book, it won't work for anybody else but you because <laughs> those were your steps. <laughs> those were your steps. Now, the principles in the how-to books are, are absolutely all target. But the steps are your steps, you see. And so the ego will say, hey, well, we don't really know how to do this. I don't know how to do this. So, you know, we don't know. We don't know. I'm really nervous. I don't know how to do this. Uh, that's a delay tactic. You know, when I got the calling to be a centerpiece of establishing Agape International, I didn't know how to do it. But, but I knew the what. We began to vision, could articulate what it looked like. This diverse, enrich, inclusive community, and I won't go into all the other adjectives, but you're sitting right there as a part of it, and, and we didn't know how to do it, but we kept walking one step, one step, one step, and there's a, there's a kind of innocence when you don't know how to do something, because later on when structures come, you act like you know everything now. <laughs> Well, this is how you do it, you know, and this is what's done in the corporate world, and, and this is what's done over here, and these are the best practices of this. And, you know, and you forget that all along the way you were leaning on God consciousness. You were leaning not on your own understanding. You were leaning on something bigger that was guiding you so that a miracle could happen, because the miracle is not going to happen in the known paradigm. The miracle happens outside of your present paradigm, and that's why it's easy if you don't know how. You throw yourself open so that there's intuition and there's direct knowing. And sometimes it's illogical. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. But ultimately, when you take that step, you meet the right people. But before that, you are becoming the right person. You see, you meet the right person because you become the right person. You meet the divine support because you become supportive. You meet who you are everywhere you go. It's like the, the gentleman that was traveling into a town, and he sees one of the guys in front of the town. He says, what's this town like? And the guy says, well, what was the town like that you came from? He said, the people were kind of mean and, and kind of unforgiving and, and kind of critical. He says, well... You're going to meet those people here. <laughs> Somebody else comes and says, what's this town like? He says, what kind of town did you come from? Oh, the people were so loving and so generous and so forgiving. He says, oh, you're going to meet those people here. You know, you're going to always meet who you are eventually. Eventually. And so, Earth School, every choice is here. Every time you choose higher, you become stronger. Just like every time you do an asana or lift a weight or walk. You become stronger every time you're in this dense field and you choose there's all these choices. You can react to negativity or you can respond to the high calling of the Christ that's within you, the high calling of that Buddha field, the high calling of excellence. Even when it's not popular, even when it's easier to react, you keep choosing, 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 choosing until the choice disappears and you enter into the pathless path and the choiceless choice, your life is surrendered to more good than you can imagine. There is no choice anymore. You're open. You're available. Simply, we're here for God. Simply, we're here for peace. We're here for joy. We're here for the creative urge to take over. We're here for loveliness. We're here for the presence. No choice. Ah! Instead of saying, where's the electricity? Electricity is saying, where are the bulbs? <laughs> Instead of saying, where's God in all this? God is saying, where are the instruments? Where are the openings? You have to point to yourself. It's me, it's been me all along. It's on me. I've got to open up. I've got to surrender. I've got to be available. I've got to say yes. I've got to choose. And when I stumble, I got to get back up. All the time. Every time there's a stumble, you got to get back up. And, and, and once again, you remember that a good sailor 
does not become good navigating very serene waters. A good sailor becomes strong when the waters are choppy. You're in some choppy times. Turbulence is here. As this vibration is being lifted, you have that strong feminine energy rising up. All over the world, I met it here, met, met it in South Africa, where all the, the woundedness of the feminine is not taking it any longer. Rising up, saying, oh no. You know, there's been a, there was a woundedness when we put a Supreme Court justice in the Supreme Court when Anita Hill said he was a, an abuser. Woundedness when the very president's holy office now has assaulted many women. Nothing happened. He was elected anyway. And that, that woundedness stirred up now. It ain't going nowhere. It's going to be healed, but it's going to be beautiful. We're in, we're in that kind of wonderful, turbulent times. Wonderful, turbulent times. I can remember speaking to Narges Motsafare, who's now in Iran, seeing her family and and, and we were looking at the, a news item a couple of years ago where the woman who was going to school was being oppressed and beaten, and, 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 and then there was a big march about her the next day, and she was very sad. And I said, Narges, listen, what you're looking at is that culture and that particular thing, it's dead now. They don't know it. But once those women have, uh, have awakened, they're not going back to sleep. So what you're seeing in terms of the repression, it's, it's just the last stand of a very myopic and narrow consciousness. Yeah. They just don't know they're dead. They just don't know it. So it's all over the world. We are in some great turbulent times, baby. And we're learning how to surf in that turbulence. We're learning how to float on it. We're learning how to activate our, 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 our spiritual buoyancy, our spiritual aerodynamic consciousness in the midst of all this gravity of turbulence is pulling people down through the reactivity. That's not you. You're going to be the opening through which the new births itself. You're in school. Get your credit. Get your karma credit every single day. Every single day. Compliment Every single day, confirm somebody every single day and let that onrush of energy flow through you. Don't criticize and control. Confirm, compliment, even yourself. I mean, just right now, just tap your thymus. Just, just let that, 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 the activity of your, nerve, your, your immune system be amplified and then touch your heart. And just say to yourself, oh, I love you. Oh. Say to the inner God, oh, I love you. Oh. Say to the God that's everywhere, oh, I love you. Oh. And just feel the onrush of those enzymes being activated. The body strengthened. Your mind becoming clear. Emotional body becoming pure. Simply. programmed mind and the ego can't get in the way and you become available to the spirit guiding you every step of the way oh yes inhale right here suspend the breath right there just hold it right there feel that all of your needs are met you can do it you're just activating a law even if your physical uh, 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 phenomenal world doesn't reveal that to you right now just feel it anyway Re release. <sighs> Inhale. <laughs> Suspend the breath. Feel that you're totally healthy right now. I don't, I'm not concerned with what a diagnosis you may have from a doctor. Just feel you're totally healthy. You're just activating a law. The nervous system is coding itself around this. Release. <sighs> Inhale. Suspend. Just feel right now that the entire universe is supporting you. You feel supported. You're never alone. The presence is here. 
Even though your mind may say, oh, I'm lonely, I'm alone. No, 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 no don't, let the mind, don't, let, don't let your mind be hijacked by that thought. Presence is right here. Let go. <sighs> now just be thankful that you're supported. Be thankful that all of your needs are met. Be thankful that divine well-being is loaded and coated within you right now. And you're an instrument of the presence that's never an absence. Return within in this moment. Return within and, and we, we begin this prayerful tryst with our heart open with a deep sense of gratitude and thanksgiving. Again, we're evoking a, a sacred law. The universe is saying something that your mother may have said to you years ago, but she may have said it in a different way. She may have said to you, if you don't stop crying, I'm going to give you something to cry about. <laughs> but the universe is saying, if you don't stop being grateful, I'm going to give you something to be grateful for. Yes. If you don't stop being thankful, I'm going to give you something to be thankful for. <laughs> you don't stop be celebrating the divine presence, I'm going to give you something to celebrate. And so we enter into the prayerful tryst with gratitude. Praise and thanksgiving opens the doors. Yes. And so we're grateful. We're thankful. We're, th we're thankful for this next breath. We're thankful for the beating of our heart. We're thankful that we are alive. We're thankful that we exist. We start there. And in this moment of gratitude and thanksgiving, we begin to sing. is all around us. Love is all around us. It envelops us. It surrounds us. It, it's in us. It's through us. Oh my God, it, it's us. It's us. It's us. It's us. And from this deep sense of recognition and uh, this pure sense of unity, word is spoken. Vibrational word, a law unto itself that only knows its own fulfillment, a law of elimination to anything that would hinder, delay, obstruct, or deny the fullness of life itself. I speak to word for each and every one of us today, knowing that our life is made whole in this instant, that every organ and every action, every function of our body temple is lifted up into the atmosphere of well-being and wholeness, the, the vibratory frequency of our celestial body, and all cells are made new in this instant that our mental body is so clear and pristine and the emotional body is so pure and lovely and the body of our affairs reflecting and revealing the sacredness of the very universe which is elegant oh see yourself as an elegant being you ever have you ever put yourself in the word elegant in the same sentence do it just, just you're, you're an elegant being you Elegance, elegance is all around you, all in you. You're, you're elegant. You're, 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 you're in a field of abundance, opulence, plentitude, prosperity, intelligence. So sometimes you think, you know, you're not that intelligent. Well, you know what? In, we're not talking about intellect. We're talking about intelligence. And intelligence is the essence of God and all that's around you. Open yourself up and just see yourself as a fountain of intelligence, a fountain of beauty, a fountain of peace and love. Woo! You're being called out by the Spirit. Tag, you're it. Tag, you're it. Tag, you're it. Tag, you're it. Feel it in your bones. Ricky. Let them feel it in their bones. Joy, joy, joy. Greater joy. Aspire up to see the greater possibility. Things we think 
our soul there's a greater plan for us after we grieve and cry and fuss spiral up the sea he came to shine the plan for us is so divine spiral up to see Take the individual's hand and feel the preciousness of that being. 